I need a power upgrade for my new welder. So today I'm gonna go over the tools and materials needed to install a 220 outlet to an existing breaker box. So stay tuned. Here are all the materials I'm gonna use. We have the plug, we have the breaker, we have some 8-2 wire, we have a little piece of conduit, with some ends, some nuts to go on the ends, and a couple of masonry screws to mount it to the wall. Here's all the tools I'm planning on using. Pretty straightforward basic tools. You can use any variation of these. The first step as always is to disconnect your main surface before you take anything apart. Before you start you need to make sure that you can actually do this. What I'm working with here is a 150 amp service with a 100 amp sub panel inside the house. These breakers all do nothing because this, well, this house was rewired. The only thing that actually runs out here is one single outside outlet. So that means I have about 50 amps to work with. I'm putting in a 40 amp breaker to run the welder. Let's open this up and see what we're working with on the inside. As you can see, we have all the space in the world in here. With this shut off, these hot lines are no longer hot. So we'll find a place to put this breaker. And maybe we'll just add it down here where these blanks were. Looks like we can put it right underneath that one and just pull out a few blanks. All right, now I wanna take my new outlet and figure out where it's gonna go thinking I will just align it with one of the punch outs and set it down here like this. Now the new box that I got is weatherproof, but it's also metric. And here in the States, we work with standard. So I got this half inch conduit that I'm gonna run through and then I'm gonna use nuts to hold it in place and that should seal pretty well. Now I gotta figure out the length and cut the conduit to length. I also got a little kink in it just in case I need some finer alignment. Now that I've selected where I want to start, I'm going to use a flathead and a little hammer to knock out a hole. Then we'll take one of our little ends and slide it up through the hole. Now that we know that works, we're going to put our plug housing in place. And then we're gonna measure the overall length that we need to cut. Looks like the whole thing only needs to be about two and a quarter inches. So now I'm gonna take this, subtract the top and the bottom, and then cut the difference out of the middle. You can make your life even easier if you have one of these handy pipe cutters. You simply line it up with your mark, and the tool does all the work. I'd suggest getting one of these. All right, now that we have our little tiny piece of conduit here, we'll put our two ends on it, and we can test fit everything. And that is exactly where I wanted this to be that I'm just going to use a little PVC pipe glue. I'm just going to use a little bit of it. And I picked up three feet of this 8-2 for about 15 bucks at the local hardware store. Probably only needed a foot and a half, but better to have too much than not enough. So what we're going to do first is prepare this end of the wire and connect it up to the plug. Then we are going to run it through the box and through the conduit and get that ready. Then we'll run it up into the electrical box here, figure out the length, cut it. Now it's called 8-2 because the power wires are 8 gauge. 
and there's two of them. And then it has a third ground wire. The ground wire hooks to the ground bus bar, and each one of the power wires hooks to one of the lugs on the breaker. Pretty straightforward. Okay, now that the three connectors are connected, we're going to run one of these washers over the cable. Then we're going to run the cable through the hole in the box. And then we're going to bend the wire and align things how we want it we slide the connector over and tighten the nut down. Then we'll put the front on the back, put it in place, and deal with the inside. That is the trickiest part because this wire is so stiff there's not a lot of room in the box. So I went ahead and just loosely screwed down two of the screws so we can get everything in place. When we get ready to attach it to the wall we'll unscrew those screws and fold it out of the way and we'll probably only do one or two masonry screws just to keep it from moving around. This is also not tightened all the way down, but it's pretty tight. We'll tap that nut tight once we get it all in place. So now we'll figure out the length of this wire. So we're going to run this in here, twist the wire around, figure out the length, and give it a cut. In case you're wondering what I was doing with the hammer, I was using the hammer and a little screwdriver to turn this little lock nut here. Now this thing is in place and not going anywhere. I think we're still going to put a screw in it just to be safe. Attach it to the wall. Now we're going to run this and cut the wire and hook it to the breaker. All right, just like that is all wired up. You just hook the two conductors to the lugs on the breaker. You hook the ground to the ground bus. Normally you would not have this insulation, but because it's such a short run and because there's not any extra wire in here, I left a little service loop just in case you need to pull it through a little bit. Probably could have made the ground a little longer but I'd say all in all, that looks pretty clean. There's not much in this box, so we didn't have to work around a lot. And now we're gonna take the cover off of this and mount this more securely. We're gonna tighten the lock nut on this conduit here. And then we're gonna run a screw into the brick. And then we will be done. We can turn on the power and we can test out the plug. Plug is all installed. Waterproof. It's on there solid. Let's go ahead. Put the cover back on. There we go.
Now we're all buttoned up. We can turn the power back on. It's as easy as that. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it off until we need to use it. I can't wait to see what we build with the new welder. As usual, I will link the products I used in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.